Hi and welcome back to a new video again RTX 4080 testing. We already had a card with a good cooler, bad selection of components, that was the Strix with a lot of coil wine. Then we had the Gigabyte card with a good selection of components on the PCB, no coil wine, but not so good cooling and also terrible software. And for today, I'm actually not quite sure what we have here. It's the Payload Game Rock Midnight Kaleidoscope, they call it. And yeah, I think the design leaves room for discussion. When I received the card, I asked some of my employees what they think about the card and everybody pretty much said, what the hell is this design except for Cora, she said. It's so beautiful. Before I start with the testing, just some quick words about the appearance of the card. Obviously, you have this diamond, they call it Midnight Kaleidoscope design. You probably either like it or dislike it. Talking about the fans, at least compared to the Gigabyte and also the SUS card, and they have a smaller diameter, which means they would need a higher RPM to have the same throughput when it comes to the airflow. Looking at the aluminum fins of the cooler, we have a bit more spacing in between them compared to the Gigabyte card, so it might need a lower RPM for the same kind of uh, throughput for the cooling. That's just a very quick assumption. Not sure if this is illuminated or not. On the back side, we have a backplate. Yeah, that's quite sleek. I actually like the backplate, especially when you look at the chamfering here. It's a bit of milling. Yeah, looks quite nice. But then there is one thing to it, and you can maybe already see it a bit on the camera. But if I put just this on here, there's a bend in here. Not quite sure. Is that only the backplate that's bent or is it the entire card? You can also see that clearly if we measure just in the middle of the card. So it's like 69 millimeters. And now if we measure just in the back of the card, it's like 70.4, depending on the exact position. But yeah, it's about 1 to 1.5 millimeter difference in width comparing here to here. And that's what makes the card look like it's bent, but I think it's just the backplate that's standing out here for whatever reason. I think this way you can maybe see it a bit better. You can see the ruler lays on the surface here, also here, and in between, I think it's a gap of max maybe two millimeters. Yeah, I'm not sure, I'm not quite sure yet. At least once the colors are changing, it looks kind of nice. I will have to think about it. First impression, also talking about the coil wine. Subjectively speaking, it's much less than with ASUS, but it's a little bit more noticeable than compared to the Gigabyte card. After, as usual, 30 minutes of warm-up phase, we are looking at the stats of the card. Just below 2900 megahertz on the GPU. That is about 20 to 30 megahertz more than what we saw on the Asus Strix or the Gigabyte Hours Master. But I also want to point out that you will not be able to tell a difference from 20 to 30 megahertz. And at the same time, this could also be due to the individual GPU quality or the GPU silicon lottery. GPU temperature is about 3 to 4 degrees Celsius higher than the SUS card. It's about the same level as the Gigabyte card, but it's also much lower in RPM than the Gigabyte card. Gigabyte was about 1800 RPM and that's like 425 RPM lower. And you can definitely hear the difference in the noise level, which we are going to talk about in a second. Board power draw, again the same about 290 to 295 watt power draw. You can see the power consumption is about 85, 86% TDP, which then equals in a max power consumption or default power target of 350 watt. Honestly speaking, the noise level is very impressive, especially if we look at that the card is running at almost 1400 RPM. And it's just behind the ASUS Strix with 39.5 decibel and it's far ahead the Gigabyte card. 
Slightly hidden on the backside, we can also spot a dual BIOS switch, which was set by default to P, should be performance. Now switching to S for probably silent and checking out what kind of differences we can spot. There are some differences with the silent BIOS, but they're very small. The GPU clock dropped by 90 MHz to 2805. The GPU temperature increased by about 1 degree Celsius. The fan speed decreased by about 100 RPM. And that's about it. So it's a very, very tiny difference. Board power draw, still the same. GPU voltage is 5 millivolt less, but it's like very, very small difference. But this tiny difference is enough to put the card on spot number one with 38.7 dBA. But also to be fair, unfortunately, when I had the chance to test the 4080 Strix, I did not test the noise level with the silent or quiet BIOS. Unfortunately, I had to return the card and I cannot test this again. But otherwise, we might see the Strix card on top. Just to note that, just to be fair. If you use the performance profile, at least in theory, you could up the power limit to plus 17%. That equals power consumption, as you can see, 410 watt. That would be possible on this 4080. And we already know that at least with a decent overclocking on air, you will not be able to fully utilize that. So that's absolutely sufficient for a 4080. The max stable clocks I could find for this 4080 is somewhere between uh, 3045 and 3060 MHz on the GPU, 1491 on the memory. This also increases power draw. I did plus 17 in afterburner. It doesn't utilize it. You can see it's peaking out at about 350, 355 watt for the card. But you can see this leads to a fan speed of about 1700 rpm so you can definitely hear an increase it's definitely getting louder it's also drawing more power and especially if we take into account that this leads to 94.72 fps which is an increase of about one fps definitely not worth to overclock these cards and with this in mind we can now start to disassemble the card and check what's inside how it's built now that we removed the backplate, at least I can tell that the backplate is not responsible for the bending problem, for the banana problem, I don't know. But if we look at this from the side, you can tell a little bit that this area here, like this area right on the back, is standing out slightly. Maybe like 1 or 1.5 millimeters. I'm not sure if the cooler is bent. We can maybe find it out if we remove the front cover later. First of all, Looking at a PCB, we can spot no thermal pads and they're also not hidden inside the backplate, which is a bit of a waste, especially because it also says warning hot surface, but it's not thermally directly connected to the PCB, which is a bit of a waste because you can utilize the backplate to spread the heat better on the PCB just by adding a little bit of thermal pads here and in this area. And then also because it's, it's additional surface area, you can use it to dissipate the heat. That's a bit of a waste, at least from a technical standpoint. Probably is not going to make a huge difference, but that's something they could improve. Or if you would have this card, you could technically improve it yourself by adding thermal pads in this area and also in this area. Interesting detail. It looks like this card was prepared to use or utilize two normal 8-pin connectors. That's something we have to check from the front. One more tiny detail before I forget about this. There was this cutout for the BIOS switch. And personally, I would like if they would make the cutout bigger or maybe just have the, the switch a bit more on top and have the backplate open to the top because this way it's pretty much hidden underneath and you need some kind of tool to access the switch. And I don't know, at least I won't do it, but others might just use a screwdriver and this way maybe accidentally scratch the PCB. That should be avoided. Maybe just place the BIOS switch a little bit more to the edge and have the cutout all the way to the top. We are starting with the cooler. The thermal paste application looks good on first sight, but there is a bit more to that. We will get to that in a second. It's a more traditional design without a vapor chamber. We have a copper plate, nickel plated, that is spreading the heat from the GPU, also the memory to the heat pipes, which we can see on the back. The thermal pads are also quite good. These type of thermal pads have, I would say, an average thermal conductivity, but they don't tear apart so easily. So that's actually quite nice. I spotted that for whatever reason, this cable looks a bit 
at least the, I don't know, like the shrinking thing on here is a little bit damaged. Maybe that was during production, like it was scratched on here or something. Maybe they should pay a bit more attention towards this. But apart from that, there is nothing unusual, nothing bad I can spot. The black frame is just for stability of the card because it will, like the PCB will directly be screwed to these points. Now talking about the TIM application, if you pay attention to this like shape or pattern you can see in here, I will take a photo with the macro lens because then you can see a little bit better what I mean. This shape you can see there is typically the first sign of what we call the pump out effect. And uh, it doesn't lead to bad performance yet, but it shows like the paste they used, or at least maybe the batch of this was a little bit too liquid. And you can see that this is the first sign where you can see the, the pump out doing its magic, working on it, basically due to the thermal expansion and shrinking, working its way out. And over time, this can lead to degradation of temperatures or that you will have to repaste your card a little bit sooner. So I'm not sure if they have to check this specific batch of paste they used or should use a different paste in general. It didn't cause any problems yet because as you could see the temperatures are good, but that's just something I noticed. The PCB looks a bit more like a budget version or budget option. I'm not sure if there is a reference PCB for 4080, but that's how I would kind of imagine a reference PCB. It's a bit more like cost cut down version. On the left side, we have eight faces for the GPU, seven faces for the GPU on the right side. The two single ones in the top center should be for the memory, at least if I just look at the, the planes of the PCB. On the right side, quite interesting that it was kind of designed or prepared to use two normal 8-pin connectors because it's also like electrically connected to the same thing as the 12-volt high power connector. The power stages are NCP 302150. 50 means that it's also rated for 50 amps. That's a bit less than what we saw on, let's say, the ASUS card or the Gigabyte card. But yeah, I will probably just attach a thermal couple on the back and see what kind of like temperature readouts we can get on the back of these power stages. There's a big enough gap between the back plate and the PCB that I could fit the thermal couple just right behind the power stages. And now the last test we're performing is to check how hot these power stages will get. Paylit also has their own in-house software, which you can use for overclocking, setting fan speeds and everything. They call it the Thundermaster. And even though it's like 2008 calling, and you might also have to require a Hubble telescope to read what you're actually setting down there, but that's just visual things. But apart from that, it works great. Like nothing to complain about. The clocks and everything can be set correctly, you can overclock the card using these functions. And if you figure out what's actually written underneath here, because that's also quite hard to see, you can set your own custom fan curve. You can also, of course, set RGB lightning which starts with the cycle mode, then you can go over to the wing spread mode, strobe. So there are a lot of different modes you can set. You can also assign different temperature values to the card. So for example, if it stays cold, it's green, and then would go up to red if it's quite warm. And obviously the rainbow mode where it's just cycling through all the different colors on the card. Apart from that, on the left, you can even save the BIOS, which also works. I also tested this, so that's all quite cool. Status shows the clocks and temperatures and everything of the card. Yeah, it could use an update just for the visual appearance, but it works. After again over 30 minutes of warm up and also testing phase, you can see that uh, the VRM temperature is below 60 degrees Celsius. And that's actually much better than I expected, especially because not even the backplate is connected to this. Maybe there's room for improvement by like one or two degrees Celsius, but I think just technically it probably won't matter. It could be better, it could be improved. Maybe they should do it just because you can do it. But apart from that, I'm actually quite surprised. I'm positively surprised how this card performed. The cooler is pretty awesome. It's pretty quiet because it's, it's still running. This is 100% load. You can hear a bit of coil whine, but it's not in an annoying state. It's in a state where if you wear headphones, a headset, you will not hear it. You will not hear it. So it could be improved, it could be, be it could be better. The Gigabyte card actually had less coil whine, but the cooler was much worse. For this, the cooler is fine. Noise levels are great, especially in the silent BIOS, not even bad. Pretty impressed. The software is also quite nice. 
it could be visually improved, but just all the functions are there, which to me personally is the, the most important. The visuals of the car, the appearance, the design, I'm not quite so sure about. If I'm fully honest, like I'm just I'm just going to say it, if the car wouldn't look so bad, this is just subjectively for me, I think this could sell very well because technically it performs great, great performance, great noise levels and everything, temperatures are good, but yeah, maybe have a bit more elegant design and then you could maybe sell a bit more, but that's very subjective, like maybe let me know what you think, maybe the majority of the people will like it and I'm just wrong, that could also be the case. You can let me know feedback about this in the comments, but apart from that, quite surprised how this turned out and it has been quite a while for me to test the payload card and very well done. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye bye.